So I'm hardly really saying anything new, that Leave voters really didn't know or understand what they were voting for. Well, this comes from Prospect Magazine, and the headline is basically this. The DUP response to Johnson to the Johnson deal proves that Leavers didn't know what they were voting for. We all knew what we were voting for. Did you now? Apparently, 17.4 million people all knew what they were voting for when they voted Leave. With Boris Johnson reaching a new deal to take Britain out of the EU, we are told that this is what the 52% were voting for. Nobody has asked the 52%, of course. The headbangers of the European Research Group have fallen in line. The uh, provider propagandists at The Telegraph are obediently performing uh, the jubilation. And the Tory front bench is finally united. But enter the DUP like a fart at a party. While the Tories get drunk on their own hubris, Northern Ireland's hardline unionists are kicking up an almighty stink at how the deal has left them for dead. The Prime Minister has lost my respect, thundered DUP MP uh, Sammy Wilson this week. It creates a border in the Irish Sea, and we will not support it. It has often been argued by Remainers that while there, were, that while there was a public majority for Brexit, there was never a majority for a specific form of Brexit. Most Leave voters wanted to end free movement of people, but not all. Some wanted to leave the customs union, but not all. Many wanted a no-deal Brexit, but not all. <coughs> Which is what I've just said constantly throughout all this. Because there is no, um, you know, you know, what does leave actually mean? No, no one at the referendum defined it. Um, you know, the softest of softest Brexit basically means, hey, we leave it, what, politically, but we stay in the custom union single market, technically fulfills the mandate for the referendum. But, you know, that's not what leave means. But no, that's exactly what leave means. You, you didn't define what it means. The argument has always been rejected by the get on with it brigade. But if Johnson's Brexit deal was put to the public referendum against Remain, it would almost certainly be crushed in both Scotland and Northern Ireland, two of the UK's four constituent nations. In fact, this Brexit deal would be, impo would be imposed on Northern Ireland against the express wishes of almost all of its elected representatives in Stormont and Westminster. English Leave voters broadly back Johnson's deal. Northern Irish Leave voters do not. Anyone trying to claim that the 52% knew what they were voting for has to explain how these two groups knew what they were voting for or when they clearly voted for very different things. Across the UK in general, more uh, 2006 Remain voters appear to back uh, the deal than Leave voters uh, <coughs> than oppose it. But depending on the poll... 52 to 40% of people don't uh, don't know what they think and around 10% of the 2016 leave voters outright oppose the deal. If leave means leave, why are these leavers against it? This is also while Johnson maintains his double speak strategy. The threat of no deal Brexit both uh, maintained and extinguished. Workers rights both guaranteed and vulnerable. Environmental protections uh, both addressed and ignored just as the government is terrified of allowing the extended scrutiny for fear of collapsing the, uh, the fragile coalition of MPs backing the deal. So a public, a public backing could simply fall away once the, de once the details become clear. The refusal to provide any economic impact assessment is deliberate. The weaponization of public exhaustion with Brexit and the government's fixation on its 31st of October as the do or die Brexit date are also deliberate. <coughs> All of this is about bouncing through a bad deal before people realise how bad it is. While there has been relatively little uh, change uh, of mind since 2016, there has been a key shift. Those who didn't vote in the referendum, either through age or apathy, are now deadly against Brexit. Hence, far more polls now show a majority to remain than leave. To ignore this is little better than to run rushshot over the opposition of the people of Northern Ireland. The DUP revolt against the Johnson deal explodes the myth of the 
this deal or indeed any particular Brexit deal cannot be assumed to have a popular mandate from the 2016. It needs a fresh mandate now. And I agree. Um, this Johnson deal should absolutely be put to the people, to a people's vote, because it won't win. It is a hard Brexit. And once again, as we have explained continuously for at least the past couple of weeks, because leave during the referendum um, didn't put anything down, anything down in con concrete, they just shouted out random slogans willy-nilly, whatever they wanted, then they didn't have to put down into paper, they didn't have to commit to anything, they didn't have to explain... Um, but you said this, this is going to be bad, so why why should we vote for leave when this is going to be so bad? They didn't have to explain that. They just had to go out and champion something um, and say it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows. And look what's happened. <laughs> and here's the thing. If, you know, even if, say, let's say we leave on Johnson's bad deal, then we are going to have to go back into the European Union. As I keep on saying before to people... All paths lead back to us being back in the EU sooner rather than later. And you have a galvanised group of people, far bigger ever than there were people agitating to leave the European Union, as we have seen. Look, just, just have a look. You had over one million people plus marching to end Brexit, to cancel Brexit completely. And then, on the 31st of October, you had the Brexit people who were campaigning. How many people turned up? Twelve. So, once again, this idea that um, there is a majority for leave is, is, is not there. It was always this fringe marginal group that has been pushed by Farage uh, into the mainstream and forced the, the Conservatives to hold a referendum, one that they didn't want to do, but one that uh, Cameron thought he could get used to get his party under control. Again, he lost. He's put us in this massive mess. Um, you know, no one is going to like what the Johnson deal does to this country, and the question will be then asked, why did we even leave? If things are worse now, why did we leave? And then there was a, now a massive group of people who now want to remain in the European Union. And if we do leave, what happens to all that group? Well, we'll only vote for people who um, want us to have a hold of referendum to rejoin the European Union. Now, it is perfectly viable. Um, that could happen within a year of us leaving. It's viable. <laughs> you know, people won't like it, but it will happen. Then we'll just go back in. And we might lose the pound, but it'll be worth it. You know, we are now at parity with the euro. So the argument of long ago that, oh, we'll be somehow... Um, subject to massive inflation because the pound is stronger than the euro the euro throughout its history has been quite a strong currency a young currency that has been growing and growing and growing in strength ours has taken a massive tumble because of brexit so as joining that i don't really care it's just paper to me you know you change pounds for euros doesn't really matter to me and it doesn't probably matter to a lot of people but there you go um but yeah I, f I fully expect us um to join the european union fully at that point um and the good thing is as i said if brexit does happen your skepticism dies a death um we did obviously at the beginning of the week nigel farage and his brexit party uh ending and dying well that will be truly his final nail in the coffin.